Moving on, we will look at the equal parts method. The assumptions more or less remain the same, so let us dive right into the calculations. And because of our assumptions with the uh, equal parts method, each wall will have nearly the same length, extending to the tiers that form the tower. Let's assume this 40 centimeter offset already. And this is to the back wall. And as we step down with each tier, so that'll be our 30 centimeter wall, one meter down, and another meter down, we'll have our 50 centimeter wall. And that actually will be stepped out 25 centimeters. And then again, 25 centimeters. And this is just an assumption for an example here, but it will depend on how many tiers you have, how many steps you'll have here, but another 25 centimeters out, we'll have our 70 centimeter wall with a um, distance that makes up for the rest of that dimension here. And each wall can be calculated as a parallelogram with the length found by trigonometry. So we know this dimension is one meter, that height dimension. And to find this dimension, the length, we can just use the same dimension, the center line um, to back wall distance with our offsets and use that to find with the dimension from the standard details or whatever details you're using here, this angle, theta, and with that angle, we can find the uh, length of each wall. And then we'll just subtract 25 centimeters centimeters as we um, step down for each tier. <clears throat> and once we have this, these calculations squared away, whether you're using method one or method two, I actually like to use both and take the maximum. So I have the most conservative material estimate. Uh, we multiply each respective area by thickness. So remember to keep the 30, 50, and 70 centimeter area split up and multiply them by their respective thicknesses and then multiply it by density. So once we've done all this for the ramp walls, we all we need to do is find the area of the fill uh, and the area of the back wall. I'll just go over the area of the fill here. The area of the back wall is going to be uh, the same for all abutments. Um, except for the height of the back wall, which is a dimension you can get off the, the standard details. <clears throat> so uh, we'll take the fill as three different areas added together. So in this drawing, our fill is going to be a plan view here. So we make sure to take our uh, thickness of the fill, as Jay mentioned in his previous lecture, we make, take our thickness of the fill, um, is going to equal that width of the anchor minus two times the thickness of the back wall. It's a little crowded there, but we are, we've already gone over this in previous lectures. Now, when I'm calculating the fill, what I like to do is split it into three different areas. So area one, I'll take is that first triangle with the um, 40 centimeter offset on the right uh, to the back wall. And I like to take this triangle. So if the ramp slope zero, um, I just consider this area to be zero. But if it's not, I take this area to the triangle. And then down to the anchor. I like to take my second area as always being a rectangle, the above the anchor uh, area. And then this next bit is a little tricky. So we, from our details, we can get our distance to ground level here. And then we also need our distance I measure from AutoCAD 
where the anchor, the cables connect with the anchor. So that distance here. And our third area is going to be this rectangle here. And in order to make things less complex and keep it as a rectangle, I just take the average from this distance and this distance. I take that average value and uh, use that to make this a uniform, um, uniform distance here. So uh, let's call this x. x is going to be the distance from the ground level plus distance to, let's call that the cable, over 2. And then this length uh, you can take as a conservative distance to the small dimension of the anchor. In this way, we can calculate our fill uh, like we've calculated our ramp walls by using all uh, dimensions that are given on the standard details or dimensions that are reported in the details. So um, we're actually automating the process by having those all reported. And we don't need to be continuously going in and measuring in AutoCAD uh, for specific designs. We have this list of dimensions from our standard details that we can use and that as we change our standard details, we'll update and change in our material estimate. Now you may be wondering how this all translates to a flexible design spreadsheet. We are still using dimensions from the drawings, so how can we use the, um, this sheet for different abutments, anchors, etc.? Well, the key with Excel is using a combination of if statements for those outlier situations and VLOOKUP for our uh, standard detail dimensions. This requires a large initial effort to document common dimensions from the standard details. And here I'll give you a, a sneak peek into my design sheet, which by no means is the most streamlined way to do this, but can serve as a good example and a good starting point. So in this sheet here, I like to start with a setup page. Uh, I use uh, purple highlighted cells with yellow for what is my inputs. And um, based on these inputs, I have documented all of the different standard abutments with a uh, option for custom, towers, anchors, um, walkways, etc. cetera, um, so that I can use VLOOKUP to get these dimensions. Um, and automate the calculations for my abutments. And if I want to, and all sorts uh, of things for the entire bridge. And if I want to change that abutment, I change that here and the rest of my tabs will uh, auto-populate and ultimately um, end up with different material qualities that I summarize with a summary tab. So this concludes the additional lecture and with this information you should begin be able to automate the design process um, or automate the material estimation, estimation process uh, concurrently with the design process so you can explore alternatives to optimize material um, and even adding a cost quantity onto that you can start to minimize the cost of your bridge. So this is a really interesting way to proceed forward and if you have any questions uh, please reach out or fill out the uh, Google form at the end of this course.